experience as we welcome you to NFL Live. You see them all right there. Marcus Spears, Mina Kimes, Ryan Clark, and Field Yates. We are with you for the next hour and jam-packed getting you ready for the rest of Week 11. More on last night coming soon. But first, let's get to what we're looking forward to on Sunday. Mina, you get to start us off. All right, so the Ravens' defense has not been playing well, particularly in coverage. But we know what they love to do under defensive coordinator Don Martindale, and that is blitz. Justin Fields has been playing well, but has struggled this season against the blitz. So I expect the Ravens' defense to send extra rushers. And to me, how he responds to that pressure will go a large way in determining whether or not the Bears can pull out the win. You know, when I would go to the Minnesota Vikings in their offense, they're playing the Green Bay Packers this week. This Green Bay Packers defense for the last three weeks has been exceptional. I mean, even phenomenal when you think about some of the pieces they haven't had as a team. But the Minnesota Vikings, you have Justin Jefferson, the one, Adam Thielen, the one, Dalvin Cook, one of the top tier running backs, show up in a game that matters, in the times that matter, in the moments that matter. My Minnesota Vikings, this is your time. Yo, Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts, keep the ascension going, man. <laughs> Playing well from the pocket, Sirianni has figured out I need to get him on the move. A lot of multiplicity to this offense, and he's orchestrating it very well. Making a strong case to be the starter going forward for the Philadelphia Eagles. Can't wait to see him against this Saints defense. And good news here for Jalen Hurts, Swagoo. He's not going to have to pay for dinner tonight, as his tight end, Dallas Goddard, has agreed to a <laughs> lucrative four-year extension with the team that drafted him back in 2018, bringing the total value of his deal to $59 million. He becomes a third of five Eagles draft picks to be extended. All uh, three of those extensions, Laura, have come since the beginning of this regular season. Yeah, remember the Eagles set up to have those three first-round picks. Going to be interesting to see what they go. Let's get back to last night. Mac Jones, very familiar with Mercedes-Benz Stadium after playing there in his college days. Early second quarter, Pats up 3-0 in the red zone. Jones finding Nelson Aguilar wide open over the middle. Runs in for the 19-yard TD. Pats up 10 to nothing. But the New England defense was really the story of this one. Next, Falcons possession, third and one on the New England 14. Matt Ryan sacked by Kyle Van Noy for a big 13-yard loss. Atlanta would miss the 50-yard field goal attempt. Just under five minutes left in the fourth quarter. New England's defense still hot. Atlanta down 16. Ryan throws. The pass is intercepted by J.C. Jackson. That's his sixth interception of the year. Patriots would kick a field goal going up 19 to nothing. Next Atlanta possession. Josh Rosen in a quarterback. Well, Van Noy takes care of that. He takes it back for a pick six with the interception. Pats win 25 to nothing. Here's Patriots cornerback J.C. Jackson after the game. I don't want to brag too much, but I feel like we got, we got one of the best defenses in, in, in the league right now. I feel like we played great defensively. We didn't give up no touchdowns, no points allowed. I mean, it don't, it don't get no better than that. Defense played outstanding. Like, I can't even describe, like, but we got to keep, keep it up. It's, it's going to get scary. It's going to be scary. I don't want to brag, but, like, I do want to brag. <laughs> We've usually seen the Pats D use physical man-to-man -man coverage. Last night against Atlanta, they played zone 81% of the time, their highest in a game since tracking began in 2016. After using zone at the lowest rate in the league the first six weeks, the Pats have really changed their identity, doing so at the ninth highest rate in the league during the five-game win streak while allowing the second lowest yards per drop back in QBR. So they've proven that they can adjust, which maybe is the most impressive thing at this point but Marcus what impresses you most about this Patriots defense oh god it's the multiplicity what doesn't impress me about what the New England Patriots are doing defensively they got two guys on the edge that's starting to ascend in Kyle Van Noy and we talked about Matthew Judon and the way he's been able to get after the quarterback they're stout in the center with Devon Godshaw and company. You talk about the second level with Hightower, his experience, Bentley, and then on the back end. Listen, it's time for us to start having a conversation about J.C. Jackson being a top three corner in this league. They are so well disciplined. Everybody understands where they need to be. But the most important thing the New England Patriots have from a defensive standpoint, they can rush the passer with four. And the pressure still works. Yep. So they have multiplicity. They can determine whatever type of game plan, whatever type of scheme. L Boogie, you mentioned it. They go zone. They go heavy man. And they feel comfortable no matter what they're trying to deploy. That's the sign of a really good defense and a really good football team. And they're doing it at the highest level right now. 
Yeah, 100%. And they also have Bill Belichick. I mean, Bill Belichick has been in the kitchen wrist flipping like a stir fry. I mean, he's cooking like Quavo, <laughs> Offset, and Takeoff are in the kitchen with him. And, you look, he, and, and it's really it's really cool to listen to Marcus talk about multiplicity, right? And I know Mean is going to have some more to add as we go throughout the show. But the one thing Marcus mentioned was the ability to rush. That's why you can play zone now. That's why you don't have to play as much man. You don't have to bring five. You don't have to bring six. We don't have to do one double. Dogs. We don't have to give away what we're going to be playing from the snap. And what they do as well is they disguise. So out of those disguises, they drop and they're making quarterbacks figure out things on the rush. And when you have guys like Matthew Judon, when you have guys like Kyle Vanoy, just a little hesitation, just a little indecisiveness can cause pressure. And that's mm-hmm. what we're seeing from the New England Patriots. And they are finishing, whether it's J.C. Jackson, whether it's Devin McCourty, whoever's in the backfield, when they get opportunities to make plays on the ball, we are watching this team do it. This is one of the best defenses in the NFL, and they are following the trend that most Bill Belichick teams follow. They are getting better as the year gets on. Uh, Nico said this morning that Bill Belichick always says the season starts after Thanksgiving. Well, it looks like they're ramping up for that time, and they're ready to eat. Yeah, Ryan, you're you're exactly right, and I think it's especially true given the fact that this defense is so different from the one we saw last year. You have draft picks like Christian Barmore coming Mm -hmm. online, looking fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, so dominant in the middle. And then free agent signings like Judon, guys guys like Van Noy coming back. So, of course, naturally, it would take time not only for this unit to gel, but also for Bill Belichick to figure out how best to use them. Marcus, you, you talked about the standard pass rush. Something that jumped out to me last night, they only blitzed Matt Ryan on 11% of dropbacks. 11, yeah, pressure, yeah, yeah. 31%. That's not usually something that happens. Like the combination the of those two numbers is spectacular. And last week, y'all, we talked about the Patriots defense, and I said they might be a top five unit. I think I might have been underselling them. I mean, this should be in the conversation for the best defense in the league. I I, I feel like I feel comfortable saying that, frankly. Uh, Mina, have we? El Boogie. Oh, go ahead. You know what's so cool about this, y'all, is that as much as we talk about offenses and how much they spread you out and spread you thin, this is vintage New England defense. Mm. This is the way it's been. This is the way he's deployed defense. We talk about his, his scheme concepts and how he could change game in and game out. He went out in free agency and, and, and got guys to emulate vintage New England Patriots defense. That's why I'm excited about it. Mina, did we ever figure out a good nickname for Matthew Judon? I kind of liked yours already, but I know you threw it out there for the oh, fans. Anybody got something? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I went with old red sleeves last week, and I have not heard anything better. I would like for him to do a green New sleeve England, for Christmas. Twitter, oh, I guess that's probably a little so Twitter, festive. <laughs> Mina, New England Twitter actually uses red sleeves. When they when they said that he yeah, broke, they call uh, his own sack record, they call him red sleeves. So that you oh. should be credited with that. Oh, red sleeves. And by the way, we're talking about the defense, but Matt Jones is now 5-0 and this season on the road. He joins Dak Prescott and Big Ben as the only other rookies in NFL history to win each of their first five career road starts.